Okay, so you're here with us again, which means you're one of those people who wants more than just the surface level stuff. You know, you want to really dig deep and understand how things work. That's the spirit. And today we're really going deep. Oh, yeah. We're talking ancient Egypt. We're talking the Great Pyramid of Khufu. Yeah. And get this, we're looking at it through the lens of some pretty cutting edge tech. Stuff most people haven't even heard of, probably right. Probably not. We're talking about synthetic aperture radar. SAR. Cardar, exactly. You got it. And LIDAR. These are tools that can like map surfaces with incredible detail, right? Absolutely. They can pick up on tiny movements, variations so small you wouldn't believe it. And we're using these tools to look at the Great Pyramid. That's wild. It is. And that's precisely what caught our eye in this research paper from 2022 by Filippo Biondi and Corrado Malanga. It was published in Remote Sensing. Catchy title. Right. And they use SAR and LIDAR to study Khufu. But it's not just about the tech itself. What's really got us hooked is what these measurements might tell us about the pyramid. You know, beyond the whole, it's a tomb thing. Going deeper. Way deeper. We're going to look at a theory that suggests the ancient Egyptians may have known some things about energy, about technology, that we're only just beginning to rediscover. Okay, so hold on. We're talking pyramids, ancient Egypt, and now some kind of lost ancient technology. This is where it gets good. Buckle up, because we're diving into some fascinating stuff. Yeah. Okay, so central to all of this is a set of graphs from the paper. Figure 16, to be exact, three graphs labeled A, B, and C. They show us the displacement, the movement of the pyramid's surface measured in millimeters, and they plot this against something called azimuth, measured in pixels. Azimuth, that's like a compass direction, <laughs> right? So it's showing us how different parts of the pyramid are moving. Exactly. And the key thing here is that these movements they measured are absolutely tiny. We're talking like fractions of a millimeter. Smaller than a human hair, probably. <laughs> You got it. The researchers, they attribute these tiny movements to just the normal background hum of the Earth, you know, stuff like wind, maybe vibrations from Cairo, even the Nile River. Yeah, it makes sense. Big, heavy structure. It's going to move a little bit, right? Right. But, but there's always a but. But there's this other idea floating around, and it's a real head scratcher. W what if these tiny movements are evidence of something more, something intentional? What if the pyramid was part of some kind of ancient energy network? Okay, whoa. I know. That oh. takes us way beyond tombs and pharaohs. Hmm. We're talking like lost ancient tech, right? That's the theory. And it even connects to Nikola Tesla. Tesla, like the electric car guy? Well, the company is named after him for a reason. This was a guy who was way ahead of his time. He was obsessed with wireless energy transmission. And some folks think his ideas might line up with what we're seeing in these pyramid measurements. Okay, and now I'm really intrigued. But let's back up a bit and make sure we understand those graphs first. You were saying figure 16, right? Mm. Yeah, let's break them down. So graph A, that's the SAR measurements of surface distortion. Remember, SAR uses radar. So on the y-axis, we have displacement measured in millimeters. And on the x-axis, we have the azimuth in pixels. It basically gives us a way to map out different points on the pyramid surface. A sort of grid. Right. And the graph shows two lines, a light blue one, which is all the raw unfiltered data from the SAR, and a darker blue line, which is the data after they've cleaned it up, removed some of the noise. So what does the clean data tell us? Well, the interesting thing is that the displacement, that tiny movement, it stays pretty consistently within a range of about 0.2 millimeters to 0.7 millimeters. Across the whole pyramid. Across the whole thing. It's going up and down a little, but it's within that tight range. Hmm. That is kind of strange. You'd think different parts would move more than others. Exactly. That's why this is so interesting. Okay, now graph B, that's the LiDAR data. Remember, LiDAR uses lasers. And guess what? The graph looks almost identical to the SAR graph. So same axes, same kind of tiny movements. Yeah. Same everything. Displacement hanging out between 0.2 and 0.7 millimeters. And that's really important because it means we're not just seeing some weird quirk of one measurement technique. Two completely different methods are picking up the same subtle movements. Uh, that pretty much confirms that something's going on right. It does. And then there's graph C. This one overlays the filtered data from both the SAR and the LiDAR, and you can see they match up almost perfectly. So they're both telling the same story. Exactly. They're both showing these tiny, consistent movements within that 0.2 to 0.7 millimeter range across the whole pyramid. And the researchers, they chalk it up to background seismic activity. But what if it's more than that? Okay, let's dive into that what if. You mentioned this theory about the pyramid being a vibrational resonator. What does that even mean? Well, think of it like this. Mm -hmm. The Earth has its own natural electromagnetic frequency, like a heartbeat. It's called the Schumann Resonance. I've heard of that. 
Yeah, it's pretty well known in certain circles, and it's a very low frequency, around 7.83 hertz. Now, the theory goes that the Great Pyramid, with its massive size and precise construction, was built to resonate with this frequency. Like a giant tuning fork. Exactly. And those tiny movements we see in the data, those could be the pyramid responding to the Earth's vibrations, amplifying them. Okay, but why? What would be the point of that? That's the million dollar question. But one idea is that this resonance, this vibration, could somehow generate energy. Remember, we're talking about a structure that covers over 13 acres at its base and was originally 146.5 meters tall. Huge. Enormous. And the precision is mind-blowing. They used massive granite blocks, each weighing about 2.5 tons, and fit them together with millimeter accuracy. Ancient Egyptians, they knew what they were doing. They were masters. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. Granite has the special property called piezoelectricity. Piezo piezoelectricity. It means that when you squeeze granite or vibrate it, it generates a small electrical charge. So the idea is that the pyramid, by resonating with the Earth's vibrations, could be creating energy through this piezoelectric effect. Wow. So the pyramid is like a giant crystal battery. It's a wild concept, right? And then there's the whole internal structure of the pyramid. The king's chamber, with its granite walls, that could be the main resonator. And the grand gallery, with its corbel design, maybe that acted as a waveguide, channeling and amplifying the energy. And what about that weird structure called the Z? Ah, yes, the Z. Some think it acted like a filter, only letting those very low-frequency vibrations, like the Schumann resonance, pass through. So the whole pyramid was designed to harness and amplify this specific frequency. That's the idea. Yeah. And the SAR and LIDAR data, by showing us those consistent micro-movements, they lend some support to the theory. Okay, but hold on. If the pyramid was generating energy, where was it going? That's where things get even more interesting. This theory brings those iconic Egyptian obelisks into the picture. Obelisks? Those tall, pointy things. Those are the ones. Now, traditionally, we think of obelisks as just religious symbols dedicated to the sun god Ra. Right. But what if they were more than that? What if they were receivers for the energy that the pyramid was transmitting? Whoa. Mind-blowing, right? The pyramid sends out the energy wirelessly, and the obelisks pick it up. So it's like a giant ancient power grid. That's the theory. And it makes a lot of sense when you think about the design of obelisks. How so? Well, they're tall and slender, often topped with a pyramidium that might have been covered in gold or electrum, which are great conductors. So they were like giant antennas. Exactly. Yep. Perfect for picking up electromagnetic energy. And remember, many obelisks are also made of granite. So they could have converted that received energy into electricity through that piezoelectric effect. Okay, but why were they always placed near water? That's another piece of the puzzle. Water is an excellent conductor of electromagnetic waves. So being near the Nile or a temple lake would have amplified their ability to receive the energy. So it's like the water was boosting the signal? Precisely. And here's something else to consider. The research paper mentions that the Great Pyramid is actually eight-sided. Each face has a slight indentation. Could that have been a way to focus the energy, to beam it towards specific obelisks? Like a giant ancient energy weapon? Maybe not a weapon, but certainly a way to direct the energy. And if you look at where obelisks were placed, they're often spread out strategically across the landscape. It really starts to look like a deliberate network. It's amazing to think that the ancient Egyptians might have had this kind of technology. I know. And let's not forget their incredible knowledge of astronomy. The pyramids at Giza are aligned with certain stars. So maybe they placed the obelisks to align with certain cosmic energies too? It's a possibility. They were masters of harnessing the forces of nature. Okay, now there's one more piece of this puzzle we need to talk about, and that's the Ankh. The Ankh. That's like the Egyptian symbol for life, right? Mm. That's right. It's often called the cross of life. But in this theory, the Ankh takes on a much more practical role. They think it might have been a resonance key. A what? A resonance key, like a tuning fork. Remember, if the pyramid was transmitting energy at a specific frequency, the obelisks would need to be tuned to that same frequency to receive it. Right. So the theory is that the Ankh was used to fine-tune the obelisks to make sure they were resonating perfectly with the pyramid. But how? It's just a symbol, right? Well, maybe not just a symbol. Look at its shape, that loop on top of the cross. Some people think the loop represents the energy source, maybe the pyramid itself, and the cross represents the energy flowing downwards towards the earth or the obelisks. Hmm. Interesting. And what about that whole thing where they always show the Ankh being held near someone's mouth? Ah, uh, yes, the breath of life. That could represent the activation of the obelisk. 
like they're breathing life into the energy network, getting it flowing. And remember the SAR and LIDAR data. The pyramid's vibrations were fluctuating between 0.2 and 0.7 millimeters. That suggests a specific frequency range. Precisely. And the obelisks would need to be tuned to that exact range. So the ankh could have been the tool they used to do that fine tuning. And there's also this connection between the ankh and water. In a lot of ancient Egyptian rituals, they used water and the ankh together. Yeah, like in the opening of the mouth ceremony. Exactly. And the research we're looking at, it mentions the Nile's influence on the pyramid's vibrations. So maybe there's a connection there. Maybe water played a role in this whole energy system. It's possible. Maybe they used the ankh and water together to create specific vibrations to fine-tune the obelisks. And remember how the SAR and LIDAR data showed those variations in displacement across the pyramid? Those peaks and troughs? Yeah, it wasn't all moving uniformly. Right. So that means the resonance wasn't constant. They would have needed to adjust the obelisks to match those variations. And maybe that's where the ankh came in? Like a high-tech tuning fork. Exactly. So the theory goes like this. The pyramid, with its precise construction, resonates at specific frequencies. The ankh is used to tune the obelisks to those frequencies. And water plays some role in amplifying or modulating the whole system. It's wild. But is there any modern science to back this up? That's where Nikola Tesla comes in. He was way ahead of his time when it came to understanding electricity and energy. He believed that the Earth itself could be used to conduct electromagnetic waves. Like a giant wire. Exactly. And he even suggested that some ancient structures might have been built for technological purposes. So he was open to the idea of ancient advanced tech. Oh, yeah. And Tesla's ideas about wireless energy transmission, they line up pretty well with this pyramid theory. Like how? While Tesla was obsessed with resonance, he believed that to transmit energy wirelessly, you needed to match the frequencies perfectly. Uh, just like tuning the obelisks with the ankh. Exactly. And he did all these experiments with something called resonant inductive coupling. Sounds complicated. It is. But the basic idea is that you can transfer energy between two coils if they're tuned to the same frequency. And Tesla thought that something similar might have been happening with the pyramids and obelisks. So the pyramid is like the transmitting coil and the obelisks are like the receiving coils. That's the analogy. And there's also this whole thing about numbers. Tesla was obsessed with the numbers 3, 6, and 9. And guess what? Those numbers and the golden ratio, they show up all over the place in the dimensions of the pyramids and the ankh. So maybe those proportions were chosen deliberately to create certain resonant frequencies. It's a possibility. And remember how the research emphasized the millimeter precision of the pyramid's construction? Well, Tesla was adamant that precise tuning was absolutely essential for efficient energy transfer. So it all fits together in a way. But let's be real here. This is still a pretty fringe theory, right? It is. Most Egyptologists, they stick to the traditional explanations. But Tesla's vision, it gives us a whole new way to look at these ancient structures. And the ancient Egyptians, they were no slouches when it came to science and engineering. They knew a lot about math, astronomy, acoustics. They were incredibly advanced. So maybe, just maybe, they had an understanding of resonance that we're only just beginning to rediscover. It's exciting to think about. It is. Let's go back to that water thing for a second, though. No. The research specifically mentioned the Nile's influence on the pyramid's vibrations. What if water wasn't just a passive bystander? What if it was actually part of the system? How so? Well, remember, water is a great conductor. It could have amplified those Schumann resonance waves, making them stronger. So the Nile was like a giant amplifier. It's possible. And the obelisks being near water would have picked up those amplified waves even better. Makes sense. And the Ankh, they use that in rituals with water, too. Right. So maybe those rituals weren't just symbolic. Maybe they were actually creating specific vibrations using the Ankh and water, vibrations that were needed to fine tune the energy system. So the Ankh was like a sonic tool. It's an intriguing idea. And then there's the whole thing about the acoustics inside the pyramid. I've heard they have these weird sound properties. They do. Some researchers think there might have been a system for controlling water flow inside the pyramid, maybe even a whole network of channels. Like ancient plumbing? Something like that. Mm. And this water system, it could have been used to manipulate the acoustics to create specific resonant frequencies. Wow. So the pyramid was like a giant musical instrument. Maybe. And those variations in displacement that we saw in the SAR and LIDAR data, those might have been caused by subtle changes in the water flow. 
So it was a dynamic system, constantly adjusting itself. That's the idea. Okay, now I know this all sounds pretty out there, and we need to be honest about the limitations of this theory. Yeah, let's get real for a second. The mainstream view is still that the pyramids were tombs, and the Ankh was a religious symbol. The researchers who did this study, they even admit that their interpretation is controversial. And there's no direct evidence of any ancient Egyptian electrical devices, right? Right. No wires, no batteries, nothing like that. And the Schumann resonance, its energy levels are really low. It's hard to imagine them powering a whole civilization with that. And Tesla, he had a lot of trouble with wireless energy transmission too. He did. His ideas were way ahead of his time. And even today, we're still struggling to make it work on a large scale. So it's a big leaf to think that the ancient Egyptians figured it out thousands of years ago. It is. But even if this specific theory is wrong, I think it's important to keep an open mind. Yeah, we shouldn't just dismiss things because they sound crazy. Exactly. The pyramid is full of mysteries, and those tiny movements that the SAR and LIDAR picked up, they're definitely something to think about. They're a puzzle piece that doesn't quite fit the traditional explanations. Right. And the ancient Egyptians, they were incredibly smart. Maybe they had an understanding of energy and resonance that we've lost. A hidden science. Precisely. And just imagine if this theory is true. It would mean that the ancient Egyptians were far more advanced than we thought. It would rewrite history. It would. It would also tie into Tesla's vision of free energy for everyone. That's a powerful idea. It is. So even if we don't have all the answers yet, the SAR and LIDAR data, they force us to ask new questions about the Great Pyramid. To look beyond the tombs and the pharaohs and see it in a new light. Exactly. And who knows what else we'll discover as we keep digging. Well, on that note, I think it's time to wrap up this deep dive. But before we go, let's recap what we've learned. We started with this research paper that used SAR and LIDAR to map the tiny movements of the Great Pyramid. And those movements, they led us down this rabbit hole of ancient energy theories. We talked about the Schumann resonance, piezoelectricity, the Ankh as a resonance key. We even brought Nikola Tesla into the mix. It's amazing to think that these modern technologies are giving us new insights into structures that are thousands of years old. It's like we're seeing the pyramid with fresh eyes. Exactly. Yeah. And even if this specific theory turns out to be wrong, it's still a fascinating journey. It is. It reminds us that there's still so much we don't know about the past. And that the ancient Egyptians, they might have had secrets that we're only just beginning to uncover. So, to our listeners out there, we leave you with this question. Do you think it's possible that ancient civilizations, like the Egyptians, possess technologies that are still beyond our current understanding? And if so, what other secrets might be hidden in plain sight, just waiting for us to rediscover them? Keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep that spark of curiosity alive. Who knows what wonders await us in the depths of history? Until next time.